Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to cover ARIMA model and ARIMA stands for Autoregressive Integrating Moving Average. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is ARIMA? ARIMA is a forecasting technique that is used to predict future data based on past or historical data. It, is, it works really well for things that change over time, like sales, for example. Basically, ARIMA model has three components. The first component is what we call it autoregressive. The second one is integrated. And the third is moving average. I know it might be, there might be a little bit of intimidating math right now, but I included a pretty simple, straightforward example coming up in the next slide. We're gonna uh, explain all these different math and equations in very simple terms. So what is autoregressive? Autoregressive relates the current value of the series to its past value using a linear relationship. Integrated, it involves differencing the data to make it stationary, meaning its statistical properties like mean and variance don't change over time. The third is the moving average. It simply models the relationship between the current value and past forecasting errors. Okay, this is what the equation looked like. So xt, okay, so the value of that time series at time t equals 2. Here I've got various parameters, phi 1, phi 2, and all these coefficients we will learn how to obtain. And you will find that simply the value of the time series at time t is function of xt minus 1, which is simply the previous values in the past, I got xt minus 2, xt minus 3, and so on, up until xt minus p. And you will notice that p is going to be a super important parameter that we're going to tune or tweak when we perform hyperparameters tuning and optimization to the ARIMA model. You will notice as well that there is d here of xt, and this is the integrated piece and I'm going to cover that as well in details coming up next. And then the last piece is I've got theta 1, error t minus 1, plus theta 2, error t minus 2, and I keep going up until I see the value of q. So basically, you notice that when we, hype, when we perform hyperparameters tuning to the ARIMA model, we actually have three parameters that we can play with. These are the p, the d, and q. So, okay, what does that even mean? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a practical example. Imagine that you're running a store and you're trying to predict today's sales based on patterns from the past. So I wanna predict the future based on historical data. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have three components. First one is AR or the autoregressive part. Simply, we can say, well, sales in the future are gonna be pretty much similar to the sales in the past. And that's the idea here. Think of the AR or the autoregressive part like a sales trend that repeats. If sales were high, let's say yesterday, most likely they may be high as well today and maybe they're gonna be high tomorrow as well. And that's the idea of the autoregressive part. The analogy here is if I sold 100 items yesterday, are probably going to sell the same number today, adjusted slightly up or down. And that's the idea of the autoregressive that you can see here. I'm going to predict the current value xt, and of course, we're going to be the future value as well, based on historical data, based on xt minus 1, what happened yesterday or the previous timestamp, and what happened in the previous as well, which is t minus 2, and so on. And that's the autoregressive piece. The second part, which is the integrated, it simply works by removing long-term trends or seasonal changes. So this primarily focuses on what's changing day-to-day. -to -day. So the idea here is, let's assume, for example, that if sales increases every week because of, let's say, growing customer base, you, what you want to do is that you would like to subtract the steady growth trend to predict the variations more accurately. Let me show an analogy for that. Let's assume that sales have been increasing for the given store 
let's say by 10 times every week what you want to do is they would like to remove that trend basically so what I'm gonna do is I would like to subtract that growth to focus primarily on daily fluctuations because with Arima model we are not actually capturing seasonality right and that's the idea here of the integrated piece so autoregressive we're gonna say well maybe the future I'm gonna pretty much look like the past and I'm gonna look back and maybe grab a couple of samples in the past so I'm gonna regress on the past with the integrated, I'm going to remove the long-term trends or seasonal changes. Okay, what about the moving average piece? Well, moving average works by fixing unexpected errors. So, for example, let's assume that if, if I sold, for example, let's say fewer items yesterday, because maybe I had an issue. Let's say I had a stock issue, for example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my forecast upwards today assuming that I have restocked. So the idea here is I'm going to adjust for past mistakes or past errors that I've done in the past. And that's the idea of the moving average. If you go up back, you will find that here I got theta one as times error of T minus one, which is the mistakes I have done in the previous timestamp. And I also got theta of T minus two and so on up until T minus Q. And of course, the big question mark is what should be the value of P, what should be the value of D, and what should be the value of Q? And that's the idea of hyperparameter tuning and optimization. By trying to play around with these values, I'm going to able to, uh, to optimize the model performance. Okay, so let's summarize. So the idea of ARIMA is as follows. We're going to predict today's sales as follows. I'm going to add the autoregressive piece. So I'm going to start with how many items you sold on similar past days. I'm going to add the integrated part. So I'm going to adjust for trends like seasonal growth or steady increases. And then I'm going to add the moving average piece. So I'm going to account for unusual recent events, like maybe a sudden sale or a stock problem. In simple terms, Arima combines pattern autoregressive. I'm going to add the trend, which is I. And I'm also going to add the corrections as well or surprises that we have done in the past to make the prediction as accurate as possible. So let's go back and take a look at the equation. So this is simply my equation. So let's go ahead and break it down. The first piece, this part here, is the autoregressive part. So this component uses past values of the series. And you will see that here xt is going to be equals to phi xt minus 1 plus phi 2 x2 minus 2 and so on. And the idea here is xt, of course, is the current value of the series at time t. Phi here, these are all the autoregressive coefficients. So these are the coefficients that I'm going to obtain. And p, which is this value here, is going to be the order of the autoregressive process. How many times I'm going to go in the past? I'm going to go maybe three time stamps in the past, or I'm going to get maybe like to 10 or 20. And that's, of course, the million dollar question. And I'm going to learn how to do hyperparameters tuning and optimization to that autoregressive piece or that P parameter. And of course, this parameter here is the white noise or random error. Let's take a look at the second part here, which is this component. And this is simply the I component or the integrated piece. And this part ensures stationary by differencing. So the idea here, I'm going to say YT is going to be equals to XT minus XT minus 1. So I'm going to basically calculate the difference between the current value minus the previous value. And of course, I can go back as well multiple times in the past. And that's the term D, which indicates how many time or the number of differencing steps that I'm going to incorporate in my algorithm. The last piece, which is this part here, is the moving average component. And this component uses past errors to forecast the series. If you remember, xt is going to be equal to, I'm going to take a look at the errors in the past. So here I got error at t minus 1, error at t minus 2, and so on. And of course, I got the other hyperparameter, which is q, which indicates, okay, how many errors I'm going to incorporate from the past to make predictions in the future. And that's, again, another hyperparameter that we can tweak or tune as well. So let's summarize the hyperparameters. So the ARIMA model is defined as ARIMA, and I have P, D, and Q. 
where P, D, and Q represent the model parameters. P indicates the number of lag observations in the model, which is also known as the lag order. Okay? D indicates the number of times the raw observations are differenced to make the series stationary. And Q indicates the size of the moving average window, also known as the order of the moving average. In simple terms, P tell me how much past data to use, which is the autoregressive piece. D is going to tell me how many times to adjust the data to remove long-term trends, which is the I part. Third part is Q, which is how much past errors to consider, and that's going to be the moving average part. And of course, I've got the slight variation of the ARIMA model, which is known as S ARIMA model. An S ARIMA model, or Seasonal Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average, is an extension of the ARIMA model that is designed to handle time series data exhibiting both trends and also now I can capture seasonality as well. So while ARIMA model accounts for non-seasonal patterns through the autoregressive piece, differencing and moving averages, S ARIMA has additional parameters to capture recurring seasonal effects. Please note that in the coming up example, we're gonna apply the ARIMA model on specific data sets. And then for the practice opportunity, I'm going to ask you to apply S ARIMA model and see maybe if the performance uh, improved. And also I'm going to ask you to compare the performance of the S ARIMA to the ARIMA model as well. And that's it. That's pretty much all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next lesson.